With last week's video about the FlashForge Voxy Lab Aquila demonstrating that even in 2021, 3D printer manufacturers still mess up the basic thermal protection features on the machines, I think it's a good idea that uh, you know how to test them too. What's the danger if your printer fails these tests? Thermal runaway. Hopefully today's 3D printers are a lot harder to set on fire than the acrylic frame Init A8s, but if your printer for some reason stops regulating the heaters on the bed or on the hot end and just puts them on full blast, at the very least, on the hot end, it's going to char itself and get clogged, or in the case of uh, the cheap Teflon lined ones, as uh, this one has, emit some particularly nasty fumes that you really don't want to breathe when you're checking in on your printer. Some hot ends may even get hot enough to melt the aluminum block until the glowing red heater falls out. What we're going to be testing today is the basic software protection that's been enabled by default, for example in Marlin firmware, for years. And it catches a couple of hardware failure modes. Um, the first one is the thermistor, which is your temperature sensor, falling out of your hot end uh, because it's not secured properly and is now reading ambient temperature. So that will tell the printer, hey, my hot end is too cold, it's reading ambient temperature, I need to keep heating. The way that the firmware is checking for this is by having a super simple model of how it's expecting uh, the hot end and the bed also uh, to heat up as it's sending power to it. So that feature also ends up being kind of a catch-all failure check. The next potential failure mode is the thermistor developing an internal short, so the thermistor cartridge just shorting out. And that would read as an implausibly high temperature. That's usually not a big deal, as that would actually tell the firmware to stop heating altogether. And last failure mode, a wire break in the cable uh, or the connector falling apart, which reads as a very low temperature, and that one is dangerous. It would again cause the firmware to keep heating if it doesn't catch it. Think of this as looking at a car speedometer. First, if you hit the accelerator, uh, you expect that number to go up and to roughly match what the speed feels like. But also, if it just shows you negative 20 all the time, but you're trying to drive 50, you know not to pin the accelerator until the speedometer shows 50, which would be never because that thing would clearly be broken. Uh, same thing, vice versa. How are you liking my compositing skills, by the way? Get subscribed. It's the same thing for the printer trying to figure out whether the temperature it's reading makes sense and if it's safe for it to continue trying to push more heat into it. Thankfully for you, it's super simple to check whether these protection features are enabled, and here's how you do it. First, for the catch-all plausibility check, um, all you need to do is to disconnect the heater wires from the mainboard and set a temperature. I'm going to do this real quick on the Aquila and the Ender 3 V2, which is the machine that FlashForge Voxelab tried to clone with the Aquila. This check does not trigger immediately, but after at most 30 seconds or so, your printer should stop trying to heat and display an error message. If your printer is hooked up to Octoprint, it's also going to send that error back over serial, and Octoprint should alert you through the browser interface. Next, the thermistor short check. To test this, uh, first reconnect the heater wire, and then locate the thermistor connector on your mainboard, then set a temperature, and with, for example, some tweezers, short out the two pins on the thermistor connection. Ideally, what should happen is that your printer displays an alarm, often mentioning uh, max temp, and stops heating. Uh, you might also see a very high temperature being displayed for a bit before the safety triggers. The Ender 3 v 2 does turn off the heaters, and sometimes it reboots, and that's not perfect, but it does turn off the heater, so that works. The Aquila just completely freezes and keeps heating, which is a fail. If your printer shows you a high temperature on the screen, but no message and keeps on heating, your printer also failed this one. But if it keeps showing a normal temperature, well, either the firmware crashed, as on the Aquila, uh, or you shorted out the wrong plug. And lastly, the thermistor wire break check. This one's super easy. Just set a temperature and unplug the thermistor. Same as before, but with this time, the firmware will be reading a super low temperature. And uh, if the manufacturer did their homework, or at least didn't screw things up, you should be seeing an error message often referencing min temp and the printer should turn off its heater. 
The cooler in Ender 3 V2 do the same as before. Um, the Ender 3 reboots with the heaters turned off. The cooler freezes and uh, just keeps on heating. So I'm going to turn this one off. If your printer fails any of these checks and does not stop heating, that by itself is a problem because it means that in the case of an actual failure, the printer is not going to react properly and will quite possibly damage itself or the environment it's in. I'm not super comfortable running printers that don't have working safety checks, not because not having them would be such a high risk, but because it's such a glaring oversight on the manufacturer's side. It takes less than five minutes and almost no skill to test for these. And if you received a printer that doesn't have these safety checks working, it either means the manufacturer didn't care to test them, or they tested them, noticed they didn't work, and didn't bother fixing them, uh, or they didn't know they should have tested for them at all. None of those options help in building trust that the manufacturer even has the capability to make responsible choices elsewhere on the printer. Recurring issues are, uh, you know, cables breaking, springs or clips uh, shorting out the heaters, etc. So if you haven't done so already, check the printer or printers you have, and if they fail any of the checks, it's time to start asking some questions. Big shout out to my patrons and YouTube members for making content like this possible. Check out the link here uh, or below the video to learn how you can join the monthly bonus Q&A sessions I do with supporters. Thank you all for watching. Uh, get subscribed if you want to see more videos like this. And as always, keep on making, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.